Um, the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Sessions, is recognized for five minutes. Chairwoman, thank you very much, and I want to thank each of the witnesses that uh, chose to appear today. I'm disturbed that the uh, acting chief, the U.S. Capitol Hill Police, uh, who was in charge of uh, intelligence, did not show today. Director Ray, thank you very much for uh, agreeing to come and be a part of this hearing. Thank you for the professionalism that the Federal Bureau of Investigation uh, has been a part of, as well as the United States Army and the men and women uh, that were under the command of General Flynn uh, and uh, Walker Payette, too. And we thank you. I'd like to, if I can, take just a second with uh, Director Ray and Without being very specific, I believe that you would be well into what might be called the management of this long investigation. This is one of the largest investigations in the history of this country. Is that correct, sir? Certainly, it's one of the most uh, far reaching uh, and extensive that I can think of. During my history of watching the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the FBI would like to get it right, and they will take their time and not try and uh, cut a corner or shirk a task. Do you believe that's still true about the Federal Bureau of Investigation? Yes, sir. I believe very strongly, and my message to our folks since the day I arrived and continuing ever since is that we need to make sure that we don't just do the right thing, that we do it in the right way and that the FBI's brand, if you will, is based in, in large part on the way we do our work, which is painstakingly, professionally, and objectively. Uh, and that's what I expect of all 37,000 men and women of the FBI. Do you believe that you would come under political pressure from leading Democrats in this committee who want you to arrest 500 more people, that you would think that you should go out and do that as a result of political pressure being placed on you by senior Democrats of this committee? Uh, Congressman, I don't, I don't feel any pressure uh, from uh, any members of, of either political party. My intention is for us to uh, investigate professionally, objectively, with proper predication, following the facts under the law, uh, wherever they may lead, no matter who likes it. Mr. Ray, I believe that what you've said to me, I believe, is true and correct, and that is the Federal Bureau of Investigation would not feel that they were under political pressure by senior Democrats to have you do something that, in fact, the Bureau knew might not be correct. So I will answer that for you. I think you answered that way. Do you believe that you would be uh, well within your ideas to say that this may take a little bit longer and there will need to be trials and the trials will develop the facts of the case and as people uh, have their opportunity to be a part of a trial that they will either plead guilty or be found guilty and that that will be the point at which we would then know the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. I would like to ask you uh, if you believe that this would be really be the story that would be told as opposed to ahead of time trying to place you and other members of uh, that work for the federal government in a diminished role at this time without knowing the full answer. I'm sure you've got questions in your mind. Do you believe that it will help you put together a better story when you actually know based upon the outcome of trials? Well, absolutely. I've always, even when I was a line prosecutor, felt like I learned, uh, I can't think of a trial I had where I didn't learn important things during the trial, even after a long, very meticulous investigation. And I would expect that to be true in the 500 or so cases uh, that are at issue here. Well, Mr. Ray, I, I want you to know that I believe that we are involved in a crisis in this country. We've been through one. I think January 6th was a, a, a very difficult time and a crisis. Uh, do you believe that you've learned some lessons? You do not need to go into them, but that you will be able to help local law enforcement as well as uh, Capitol Hill Police so that you can give them, uh, before we get the after action report, give them information that would secure our country better today moving forward? 
Uh, I believe we've already learned some valuable lessons and I expect we will continue to learn more and we view the Capitol Police as terrific partners uh, who have a very tough job to do and we look forward to working with them. Mr. Ray, I want to thank you and I hope that you would know that every single member of this committee would hope, and wish and pray that the lessons that are learned you will be able to, be able to bring to bear to not only support uh, the American people, but also the members of law enforcement to help them be better. And, sir, I want to thank you for your time today, and may God bless you. The gentleman yields back. In the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocate for the superiority of the white race. That is an absolute flat-out lie. It is not our greatest threat. Not once in his speech today did Merrick Garland mention last summer's BLM riots or skyrocketing crime on our streets, the riots we still see week in and week out? How about Merrick Garland? You condemn this man on your screen, Justin Tyran Roberts, arrested for shooting five people in a 20-hour shooting spree in Georgia over the weekend. You know why he did it, according to investigators? They insist he was intentionally targeting white, military-looking men. That sounds racially motivated to me. He didn't mention that. No mention of this black on white crime because it doesn't fit their divisive narrative. These are stories that are actually happening in America. How about we stop issuing fake warnings about crime based off of political agendas and start prosecuting all criminals no matter what color they are? When you're up there, are you just getting tired of being told you're a racist, I'm a racist, everybody watching is a racist? Yeah. They have to talk about January 6th, and they have to talk about things that divide us on, uh, along racial grounds. It is, it is so wrong, but that's who the Democrats are today. They're this radical left-wing party, and they have nothing else positive to talk about, so they have to go here. You know, you look at January 6th, everybody has said it was a tragic day, it never should have yep. happened, they wanted people that were violent and destructive put away. But, you know, I was looking at Senator Ron Johnson, he looked at hours and hours and hours of tapes, and he was like something like 40% of the people were just let in by Capitol Police. But they don't talk about any of that, and you have SWAT teams showing up in California at somebody's house trying to rouse them out of the house for walking around taking selfies inside that Capitol. It isn't right, Congressman. Or how about the couple in Alaska who weren't even in the Capitol? I mean, look, you're right. We Republicans have been, conservatives have been consistent. We condemned the violence that took place on January 6th, and we condemned all of it that took place all last summer with all these, uh, in all these metropolitan areas around our, around our great country. The Democrats are the ones who have been hip hypocrites on this. They did, they, last summer was fine. That was a righteous cause. But then they focused on, on January 6th. But the couple in Alaska who weren't even in the Capitol, the FBI kicks in their door, holds them at gunpoint, handcuffs them, interrogates them for four hours. They got the wrong couple. And then they take their phones, their laptop, and their pocket-sized copy of the Constitution. Talk about, I mean, th that, there's got to be irony in that, that, that fact alone. So, yeah, th where's the consistency that we would like from everyone? We've been consistent. I wish the Democrats would do the same. Yeah. Well, there's my pocket constitution. I carry it with me all over the place. <laughs> and I'm in Texas, Congressman. Come and take it. Usually we're talking about guns. This time I'm talking about my constitution. In the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocate for the superiority of the white race. Garland did not provide any numbers or statistics to back up this claim, but pointed to past racially motivated shootings and attacks, as well as the January 6th riot on Capitol Hill. Noticeably, Garland spent his entire 26-minute speech without even mentioning the summer of riots one time, simply ignoring months of attacks on police and federal buildings and cities all across this country as if it just didn't happen. Steve, I think this shows how politicized Biden's DOJ has really become ignoring vi radical violent groups like Antifa, like BLM, simply because they support the left-wing agenda. Yeah, unfortunately, it's another example of two sets of rules or two sets of narratives, really, in a way. And the narrative being spread here, of course, is that that January 6th 
is, uh, was a, a riot that somehow endangered the American Republic, which is not in any sense true. It was an unarmed riot, inexcusable for, to be sure, but unarmed. No, not one person has been charged with having a firearm inside the Capitol that day, and it lasted a few hours. To try to compare that to weeks of rage and carnage across the summer last year in 2020 um, is just totally ludicrous and illogical. Unfortunately, that's right where Merrick Garland went. They're essentially pitting Americans against one another by labeling it via basically a race war, which is essentially what they're implying with that statement. I don't agree with it. I think it's absolutely horrifying to see that you have the DOG, DOJ essentially being weaponized against the American people. There was, a, there was a rally in Chicago of white supremacists on January 25th, and they put out a national call and they got 80 people to show up in Chicago. And according to one expert, five people were from the Chicago area. Out of about, what, eight or nine million people who live in Chicago, there were five people. Right, and so a lot of this uh, the southern, the, relies on the Southern Poverty Law Center and the statistics that they put out, and the media regurgitate that. And so I think we have to be careful. Certainly, I, I do not trust the media uh, on this issue because they they have proven themselves to be uh, you know not reliable when it comes to being partisan and pushing certain narratives. So um, is white supremacy? It, is there some in the United States? Absolutely. Is it the most uh, biggest threat to to America? I think that's overblown, and I think that the administration is pushing it for their own political reasons. You know, it seems to me that race relations in America in recent decades have improved so dramatically that things like, for example, interracial marriages are totally unremarkable in America today. Uh, and it is not considered acceptable in polite society at all to have racist views. And yet we have people like Garland and Joe Biden who want to insist that the country is systemically racist. Are they essentially protesting a struggle that has already been won in American culture? You know, there has been tremendous progress in this country. And, and for a lot of folks uh, on the left to, to, as they're saying now, this is, you know, voting rights, it's Jim Crow 2.0, that there's been no progress made since the 1960s or even the 1860s. I mean, that is, most Americans understand that's ludicrous. I mean, that is gaslighting, right? That is an absolute gaslighting right. of the American people. And so I think, uh, again, in our normal everyday lives, we do not see the bogeymen that are being made out. There are not Klansmen walking around the corner. There are not white supremacists uh, gathering on street corners. And so I think, uh, you know, that ultimately falls flat to the American people because that's not what we see and we live in our day-to-day -day lives. Right. And we understand that racism is really, uh, you know, has, has been a thing of the past. I mean, does it still exist today? Sure it does in certain areas. But is the, is the country systemically racist and oppressive? I don't think most people believe that.